Hey, my name is Curtis Nations. Uh, we're here at Traeger Grills headquarters. Uh, I am the pit master for Traeger. And today we're gonna be doing a roasted half chicken with an Alabama white barbecue sauce. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up this barbecue sauce. Uh, this is something that you can do two, three days in advance. As it sits, everything's gonna kind of melt together. It's gonna be great. So what I love about barbecue is the history behind it. Um, and there's a lot of arguments about where it started, how it came to be, and there's real no documentation about it. But what we're doing today, this Alabama white sauce, there's history behind it and there's no mistaking it. I mean, it was in the early 1900s, a gentleman named Bob Gibson, um, they called him Big Bob Gibson. He was a railroad worker and he was about six foot four, 320 pounds, big guy. And on the weekends, he would set up in his backyard, get a bed of oak going and just roast half chickens over it. And people wanted sauce with it. And he didn't like a sweet barbecue sauce. So he came up with this white sauce. So you'll see there's no sugar in this at all. We're gonna have a lot of things that are kind of tart, but it really plays well with chicken. I love it. It's one of my favorite recipes. What we've done is we've taken the mayo, which is the base component of our, our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon juice and we're gonna stir that in. And about the only thing this has that a traditional barbecue sauce is gonna have is our next ingredient, and that is apple cider vinegar. And that's in most barbecue sauces. Gives a little bit of a tang, a lot of flavor, a little bit of sweetness. And then on this one, we're gonna kick that up a little bit by adding some apple juice. And this is gonna put a little bit of sweet in there, but not be too overpowering with it. So when I like to just mix as I go, every ingredient you're gonna see me stir. So there's the apple juice. Now we're gonna go into some garlic powder. And the great thing about this is if you like something, add a little bit more of it, you know, whatever your taste is. A little bit of cayenne pepper for some heat. A little bit of mustard powder. A little bit of salt. And we'll just add the black pepper at the same time. They go together. Salt and pepper, can't get better than that. And now we're gonna add what really, in my opinion, really sets this sauce apart. And that's some prepared horseradish. Um, you can buy it in a jar. If you're feeling real enthusiastic, you can make your own. I usually just use the prepared creamy style. And this gives it, again, a little that cayenne and this gives it a little bit of a kick, a little bit of a heat. It's a great combination. So now we're just gonna set this off to the side. If I was gonna save this, I could put this in an airtight container, put it in the fridge. It'll last two, three weeks before you use it. I suggest, you know, the night before is great or if you can do it a couple days in advance. And usually when I make it, we'll do a couple batches of it. Um, it goes great with a slaw. So if you're gonna make a slaw later in the week with another dinner, this is a great slaw dressing. Turns out really good. So we'll get rid of this stuff. And as we do that, we'll kind of talk about what kind of chickens I like to use. I don't like to get a really big one. Um, I prefer maybe a two and a half to three and a half pound chicken, four pounds at the most. I think the bigger they get, the tougher the meat is when you're done. So I like to find a little bit smaller than most people look for. And there we go, we're gonna start with the bigger one. And the one thing that I like to do right to begin with is I'll take a look at the top of this thing. Sometimes there's some excess feathers, those kind of things. I can see a little bit of that on here. So what I do is I'll just grab a sharp knife and I just kind of take it across almost like a razor, just like you're shaving this guy. And this will get rid of that excess and just make for a little bit better presentation when it's all over with. That looks pretty good now. Not too much of it left, so we're good there. I'm just gonna leave that there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this guy over. And what you wanna do is you wanna stay as close to this backbone as you can. The reason for that is that's what's gonna, all these joints here on the back are what's gonna hold that bird together if I come over here too far, I start cutting into knuckles and joints. When I lay this down, it's just gonna kind of flatten out like a pancake. I want this thing to sit nice. I want it to be thick. So what I'll do is I'll take that same knife and just like when you're a kid, we're gonna create kind of a dot to dot, just something to follow. So I'm gonna go right down the backbone with that knife. 
and I don't wanna to go too deep, I'm not worried about it. Again, this is just a line to follow with my scissors that we're gonna pull out here in a second. And what I like to do is I'm gonna follow these lines. I like to grab this, I don't know the technical term for it, I call it the tail. So I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna stay as close to those lines as I can with these shears. I'm just gonna cut right through that bone. And then a lot of the times when I get down here to this end, it's really hard to get through, but at that point, you're through everything, so I just grab my knife and just run it right through there. Then same thing on this opposite side. We're gonna start that. If you're really ambitious at home, you can save these, you know, the stuff we're trimming off, you can make a great stock out of it later. What I'll do is I'll just get a gallon Ziploc baggie and start throwing these in. And every time I do a chicken, I'll add some more. And you know, within a few months, I've got enough to make a stock. We'll make some soup or gravy out of it. But today, that's just going right there. So now I'm, I'm not gonna open this up too much. I want us to stay intact, but I wanna come right down the middle with a larger knife. Uh, chef's knife, I'm gonna use a butcher knife today just because I have it and it's a lot easier. So in the middle here, there's a, what I call a kill bone. And so I'm gonna find the center of that kill bone and with a nice sharp knife, it should just be really easy to cut right down through that. And then we're gonna split that guy right in half. And then what I like to do is just kind of clean this up. We've got, sometimes you have some things inside here. I just pull those out. And then 90% of the time, you've got a big chunk of excess fat right here at the back end. Sometimes it's a little thicker and more rubbery than others. So we're just gonna move these guys off to the side with these other chickens. And then we are going to throw this guy under the table just to make room so that we can get seasoned in these beautiful things. And I'm kind of picky about presentation when I serve food. So whenever I'm gonna season something, I'm gonna season the bottom of it. So on this guy, I would consider this backside where all the bones are, the bottom. So we're gonna flip all these over with one hand and today we're just using some of our Traeger, Traeger chicken rub. Got a lot of great flavors in here, a lot of garlic, a lot of spices. Gives it a great color as it roasts. We're gonna put a moderate coating on. I'm not gonna go super heavy, but not too light either. You want that flavor in there. And I like an even, even seasoning over everything. So what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna hold this up to the side, and I'm gonna get these sides. That way I'm not having it lay flat and trying to get some seasoning all over it. And that's gonna be pretty good. So now we're gonna lay that down just like we like it. First thing I like to do is lift up that wing, get a little bit on the back of there and a little bit under it. And now we'll go over the top of that wing. Then we're just gonna continue to do that. And there we go, wash my hands up and these guys are ready to go on the grill. So we're here, we've got the chicken. It's been sitting for about 10 or 15 minutes to let that rub melt in. Now we're gonna throw it on the grill. So with all that, the chicken's on, it's ready to go. I'm gonna to return to this grill in about 60, 90 minutes. We're gonna check for that internal temp. Uh, I'm always looking for 185 degrees in the legs and the thighs and 155 to 160 in the breast. So we'll come on back and see how we're doing. So we've got the sauce here. It's been about an hour and a half. Chicken has hit 185 in the thighs, about 160, 165 in the breast, which is right where we want it. So now we're gonna dunk these bad boys put them back on, let them sit for 10 minutes, and then they're ready to eat after that. So I like to move the sauce as close to the grill as I can. That way I don't make a big mess. And I like making a couple extra batches of sauce. That way I can just bring it right in there. And I'm not trying to mess around with ladling it into the grill. So we're just gonna pick that guy up, let it drip for just one second, get some of that excess off and then throw it on there. Again, top, bottom, let it sit for one sec, and then let's pick it up. There we go. 
And then the one thing I love about this white sauce is we're gonna leave these on here for 10 more minutes. We're gonna come back and you're not gonna see that thick white sauce. It's gonna melt in. It's just gonna look like a really moist cooked piece of half chicken. So we'll come back in 10. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's open this up, see how they look, see if they're ready to pull off. Yeah, that looks amazing. They're nice, they're moist. Let's get these guys off of here. All right, they're good to go. They look amazing. Let's go get this final plating done. So here we go. We've got these amazing chickens. They came off about 10 minutes ago. We want to let them sit. That's going to stop the cooking process, let it absorb some of that juice back in. And more importantly, it's going to let it soak up some of this uh, great barbecue sauce. Another thing I like to do right before I serve it is I'll hit a little bit more rub over the top of all of these guys and just a light dusting just for that little bit of flavor. The simple traditional barbecue dish. So what I'm gonna serve it with is maybe some, some kind of macaroni salad, a potato salad, a coleslaw, even just some chips, just something real simple. Okay, so let's just go ahead and grab one of these guys. This one looks the best to me. So we're gonna set that right down in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear this leg off and give it a shot. Why not? We've cooked it, we've done all this work. I'm gonna grab this knife so I don't rip it. Set that up there. Great color, great smoke ring. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. Let's try it. That's really good. You can taste the tang of that horseradish, the lemon juice, everything just works so well together. And that's it, simple as can be. Lots to do with the leftovers, sandwiches, enchiladas, anything you can think of. For this and other great recipes, visit traeger.com slash recipes, or you can download our app.